Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, boy, we're still in summertime. Good afternoon, everyone. It is hard to believe, but the summer is coming to an end. So we have a few families that are coming in. Yes, it is coming to an end. It's amazing how quickly the summer goes. I guess they say when you're having fun, you don't account for time. So we hope everyone's having a great summer, that the summer has been great for you. I shared with our last group, I had the fortunate experience of taking my son, I have four children, my son is the youngest, had the fortunate experience of doing a father and son trip and took him to the Olympics um, in Paris. And it was an amazing experience, um, one that I would cherish and remember forever. Um, so that was my summer for the most part, um, working alongside my two colleagues, getting um, school ready. Uh, most of you know Mr. DeBellis, our assistant principal. Good afternoon. And Mr. Calasuno, not only is he our assistant principal, but he's also the athletic director. So again, new faces for some, but certainly for most, uh, familiar faces. So we're gonna get right into the presentation. Um, before doing so, I just want to call up Mr. Sullivan. I want to let him introduce himself, talk a little bit about his role. Um, he has another commitment to get to, and we'll get into the presentation. So welcome back to most of you. If anybody's new, welcome to Tuckahoe. Um, it's great to see you guys all back here. Um, you guys know I'm the school psychologist, so I'm here if you have anything they need to talk about, anything going on, um, we're here to support you. Social things, um, you know, stress is a real thing, so we can talk about different stress management strategies. Uh, our office is on the first floor, as many of you know. Um, and I guess the, the piece of advice that I'm gonna give to the ninth graders specifically, uh, and parents for you to hear, is that this is an excellent opportunity for a fresh start. Um, if there's any changes you would like to make, this is what we call a natural transition. Um, this is where most effective changes can happen. Okay. Um, also, if you feel like you're being already successful, keep up with your good habits. Um, and the very last thing, this is for the parents to hear also, four years happens really quickly. So here you are settling in your ninth graders, um, and the four years fly by. So enjoy them, um, but also let's steer them in the right direction, and we're here to help you do that. So welcome back, or welcome, and look forward to working with you. So our agenda for today is a little bit different. There's not gonna be a building tour because most of you know our school. If you are new to our building, please stay back and we will give you a personal tour around our building. Um, Dr. Goodman could not be here, so we're gonna get right into the presentation. Dr. Kehoe was also pulled away, so I'll briefly talk a little bit about um, technology um, as it relates to the high school. Um, in our last group, we had a student panel. We thought about a student panel for this group, but you know, we figure that we'll make a little bit change so it's not too long of a presentation. So parents, the best way to contact us if you need to get a hold of administration, emails work really well. We're very responsive to email, and if need be, a phone call, but emails really work well for us. Um, I see some familiar faces who in our last presentation, so let me just quickly introduce Ms. Wonos, who most of you probably know, but she's our new PTA president. And as you know, the PTA does a lot of work with us, uh, such a strong partnership. They provide so many resources to our students and certainly supporting our teachers through grants or what have you. So again, you just heard from Mr. Sullivan, who's our psychologist. As you know or may not know, we have two school counselors. Uh, they're not here with us today, uh, Ms. Perello and Mr. Treglia. Uh, Ms. Pinto, who's the principal secretary for the high school. Ms. Nicoletos is the high school and middle school uh, secretary in the guidance office, and Ms. Tierney is the attendance secretary, so she deals with the attendance for middle school and high school. And of course, Ms. Devereaux, who's our new school nurse, who is doing an amazing job. So let me begin by just starting with this quote. And I want you to take a look at this quote and think about what it means to you, especially as scholars starting your ninth grade year, 
that's going to go by very quickly, as you heard Mr. Sullivan say. As you're thinking about that quote, I'm going to share with you, as I shared with the last group. This is what it looks like in my household. My daughters, my youngest two daughters, are 17 months apart. So last week, Thursday, my wife got on a plane with my middle daughter and flew her to school in Miami. Then from Miami, that was Thursday, Friday, she had to fly to Washington, D.C. to meet me as we are enrolling our daughter or getting our daughter transitioned to George Washington University. So that's what it was like trying to get my two daughters to get ready for school. My son, we came back from Paris, and then two days later, he went to Portugal to play soccer with his high school soccer team. So there's been a lot going on in my household. I say that to bring it to this quote, because I talk to my personal children about this all the time. What you do today will determine not only your future earnings, but your future success. So the classes you take, how hard you study, finding balance between sports and academics, challenging yourself, as you'll find out very shortly, we now offer 16 AP classes. And that was a concerted effort of ours, working with our teachers, Dr. Keo, the leadership team, to make sure that we are challenging you and providing you with opportunities. Why? Because we've done some book studies, and we know that three things matter more to colleges, especially elite colleges, than anything else. The courses you take, how well you do in those courses, ACT, SAT. 75% of elite colleges make their decisions based on those three criteria. So the courses you take really, really matters, and how well you do. You know, I, not saying this to brag, but I say this with a sense of pride. My daughter's at the University of Miami, she's just she going into her junior year, she got a 4.0 in her sophomore year. Oh, we were thrilled about that. But it just didn't happen that semester. It was all the work that she did prior that led to that success. So. We want to stress to you, what you do today significantly matters. And it's not just academics, the choices you make, social media, your phones, what you research on your phones. You use any school device, we automatically get an alert based on what you enter in that computer. If you search Google, if you trigger, if there's certain words, anything that relate to bullying, weapons, explo any of those things, we automatically, within seconds, we get an alert. And it's not just us. It's the superintendent, it's the, it's the director of curriculum. We all get these alerts. And then we are required to react immediately. We look at what the alert is to determine is it school related, related to an assignment. We even contact your teacher. And if it's not, then you're in our office because we're required to. So I put this quote, we put this quote up here because the decisions you make in and out of school, and I want to stress that, it's not just the decisions you make in school. The decisions you make out of school also matters. Volunteering, right? It matters, right? Finding a balance, extracurricular activity, all these things matter. So I want you to think about this quote and see yourself four years from now. Where would you be applying to go to school? Don't wait until your junior year. Start thinking about college now. So then you can take the steps, the right steps, so you are in the driver's seat of making a choice, not having your choices be limited. I must stress that. The decisions you make will empower you to make a choice, not have someone make the choice for you, meaning that 
you really want to get to go attend the school, but you're not being accepted because a variety of reasons. Don't let that happen to you. Make the right decisions now so you have unlimited options. So this is why we start with this quote. So I'm going to pick it up a little bit. Bless you. So again, talking about doing something for yourself today that your future self will thank you for, right? We have our valedictorian and our salutatorian. Jackson Snyder and Renee uh, Ari Ari Ariana did phenomenally. They really challenged themselves, and they're not the only ones. And many of you have seen them in the school. They had a balance between sports, academics, uh, um, um, extracurricular activities, and they did really well. And I'll tell you this, just as a parent, you know, I look at a school like GW, you're talking about over $90,000 a year. There's some students at that school now that are going free, not based on financial aid, but based on their academic profile. There's some students that get 100% of what's called merit scholarship, and it's only academic base. So how well you do in your classes really does matter because college is extremely expensive. And that 90,000 is per year. So again, the graduating class of 2024, see yourself there. You'll be there before you know it. We don't want to rush it. We want you to take the time, but you will be on that stage before you know it. Our students are going on to some of the top universities in the country. We even have some students that are going to school or university in Italy for different reasons. You know, some of them wanted a different challenge, different experience. Some of them are going to school internationally because its tuition is half. You know, look at a school like St. Andrews. St. Andrews costs less than half of a major university. So you want to explore. You want to be informed. Okay? So again, and this comes down to the work of our phenomenal educators. We have some fantastic educators who go above and beyond to make sure our children are really prepared. Not to do well, but to do exceptionally well. So some data for you to know. 98% of our ninth graders took at least one Regents exam. 91% of all ninth graders right, took the Regents and scored a 65 or above. 97% of all ninth grade students who took a Regents, sorry, 97% of all ninth grade Regents scored be were between a 55 and above. Students at Tucker was named a school of distinction. We have students that are doing phenomenally. Advanced placement courses. This is our data from the last school year. 96 students enrolled in AP courses and 192 exams were taken. Mr. DeBellis, who's sitting right here, he's in charge of all of our AP exams. He's our, actually our testing coordinator for regions and for AP exams. I want to thank him for the work that he's done in helping to get us to this point. 79%, 79 students earned a three or higher on their AP exam, 82%. So just talking about college and money, AP exams rated on a five scales, right? One through five. If you score a three or higher, depending on the university you're applying to, they will give you college credit. We have some students who've left here with over 24 credits, 30 credits. Let me translate that for you. Your freshman year in college, you've taken anywhere between 15 to 18 credits per semester. There's some students who've left here where they're entering college technically in their sophomore year because of the number of AP classes that they took. They completed a full year of college. Remember what I said, 90,000 per year. So think about the money you and your parents are saving. So it gets back to do something for yourself today, your future self will thank you for. 
17 AP scholars, three AP scholars with honors, 11 AP scholars with distinctions. This is based on how high our students did on either one or multiple AP exams. And as I indicated, for this coming school year, we've increased our AP offerings to 16 AP courses will be offered. AP courses now start in the ninth grade. So from ninth grade right through 12th grade, their AP offerings. So here are some of our required courses. Let you take a look at that. So in the ninth grade, students can take English 9 or English 9 honors. There is a criteria to be placed into English 9 honors or any of our honors classes. Our AP courses, we don't set a criteria so it's open enrollment, so any student can take an AP class, but please be aware it's a college level course with college level expectations from reading, assignments, so just please be aware of that. So again, honors courses, there is a set criteria that you need in order to be enrolled. AP courses is open enrollment. Here are a list of our AP courses. And one of the things that I have for you, if you have not received it before, we'll give it to you at the end. We did a tremendous amount of work putting together what's called our course catalog. Every single course offered at the high school is listed in this book with a description, if there's a criteria. So let's not wait till your junior year. Please take a book before you leave so you can start thinking about your future, okay? Some recent elective courses that we've implemented, again, trying to give our students a competitive edge. Also, getting feedback from students about courses that they would like, um, we added these additional courses. I'm gonna call Mr. Kalaswino up, but before doing so, did everyone receive a folder? Okay, in your folder, just to speak about that a little bit, your folder should have your schedule. Please note there is some revisions taking place with some schedules. In high school, different from middle school, there's something we call a drop. Better late than never. Come on in. Come on in and have a seat. So in your folder, and students, if you did not take a folder, if your parents are not here, please take a folder. It's marked by your name. Your folder has your schedule. It also has some important information. The first sheet on the left provides you with a table of content. Every item on the top, you have a hard copy of that in your folder. The bottom portion, all those items are listed, I'm sorry, are included in our website, so they're there for you electronically. There's some forms that should be completed and returned by specific dates, so that information is listed for you. Okay? Without any further, Mr. C. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming. As Mr. Arthur mentioned, we've had a number of recent initiatives um, of developing new courses at our high school. So we took some pictures um, when we feel like the pictures can speak a lot larger and better than a bunch of words on the slide. So the next few slides that you're going to see are going to be a variety of images from some of the events that we've held throughout the year. So one of the initiatives that we as an administrative team have really challenged our teachers on is to really bring learning outside of the classroom. So to come with us with ideas, the PTA has been extremely supportive. So as you can see up on the board, the next few slides are going to be some trips that some of our courses and some of our recently implemented courses have taken um, outside of the four walls of their classroom. So our fashion and business course took a trip to Saxaw Fifth. Our community, our community chemistry course took on Urban Glass in Brooklyn, New York. 
And our entrepreneurship class actually developed prototypes that they brought down to William E. Cottle School to the fourth grade classrooms to show some collaboration and bring um, our students and let them learn some presentation skills um, with our fourth graders down at Cottle. Okay. So up on the board, you'll see a variety of teachers. So the high school is a little bit different, right, where so you may have a variety of different teachers depending on what class you are taking, depending on the elective. So up on the board, you'll see the options of the different teachers. Um, they each teach different courses within their curriculum area, but please be advised that you may see some of these names on your student schedule. Up on the board is a sample schedule. All right, many of you, the schedules look very, similar to those at the middle school. Um, the only items that may be a little bit different is on these schedules, you'll see rather than days one through six, which you see on like the middle school schedule, they're called A through F on these schedules, okay? It's a similar, you know, day one through six cycle. Um, the term you'll see um, is pretty much 24-25, but some of you may see under term where it may be some S1, semester one, S2, semester two. That just means you're taking a course for the first half of the year versus the second half of the year. So please just be aware of that. Those might be some slight changes that you didn't see at the middle school, right? So middle school, we offer more quarter-based classes. High school, you might see them by semester, okay? Also up on the board is something that was implemented last school year, which is an add, drop, or course change request form, okay? This is a form that can be found in the guidance office or um, on the guidance website, okay? Please be sure to take a look at this form. It's a form that we will need submitted um, previous to us being able to drop or add or change a course on your schedule, okay? And there is going to be a date at the bottom as a last day to add or drop or change a class. Okay, so please also be um, sure to check on which date that is. Okay, yeah, go ahead. And just to add to this, it doesn't necessarily apply to ninth graders, but this is a form as you move into your 10th grade year, you might decide, you know what, I don't want to take that elective, I want to take a different class. All right, but we still wanted to introduce this form to you. So I don't want you to be confused thinking that you have to drop a class. No, you have, your classes are pretty much set but as you move on into your 10th grade, 11th, and 12th grade, there's more flexibility with your schedules. Okay, so now we're gonna take you through some of our programming at um, Tucko High School, which some of you are very familiar with. Um, but one of the points of pride in our district is definitely placed on music and the arts. So in many districts um, where these subjects and programs are sort of the first to be cut, um, different, right? Tucko has found a way to keep getting better and better in the areas of art and music. So our winter and spring concerts are always a huge hit, as well as the community events that our music programs participate in. So we really take great pride with seeing our musicians on display. Additionally, over the past two years, in a great partnership with the PTA, we've brought back our THS TMS art show for the entire community to see. It's typically held during the spring semester. So if this is not something you've attended or seen, I would really encourage you to come on out um, this spring and take a look at really the phenomenal work that our artists are putting on display. This year, we also held what's known as Junior Achievement. We partnered with this organization, and Junior Achievement is basically the nation's largest organization dedicated to giving, giving young people the knowledge and skills they need for their own economic success, plan for their future, and to make smart academic and economic choices. So our 11th graders primarily participated, um, and, they had, and they went down to Cottle and partnered with the Cottle School to bring this program forward. Additionally, as Mr. Arthur mentioned, we have implemented some college trips. So last year was um, our inaugural year where um, we took our juniors um, to Binghamton University in the spring. Um, this upcoming year, we are looking to expand upon that. So I do know we have a trip planned for mostly our seniors, but there are also, I think, some juniors involved um, that are going to the Boston area to visit some colleges this fall um, on October 1st and 2nd. And then we're also going to be continuing with our college trips um, with one local visit. So last year we visited Iona University. We just take, took a walk over with our counselors, but also we are going to be continuing our partnership with Binghamton University this spring. So please, as your child continues throughout our high school, please be on the lookout because these are great opportunities for your student to get exposure to the college process. Now we're gonna move into some of the extracurriculars and take a deep dive into what's offered at the 
um, high school beyond just the four walls of the classroom. So at the high school, we offer um, nearly 30 clubs and extracurricular activities for our students to engage in. Um, like we do in the middle school, we continue it in the high school. We really encourage you going into your ninth grade year to find something that you will participate in throughout the four years of your high school experience. It's something that colleges really look for also is that consistency in participation. All right, so it's really important in your ninth grade year to explore, find one of our clubs or extracurriculars that you can really participate in, and it's beyond just athletics, right? Getting involved with the club is extremely important. So some of our clubs, as, as I mentioned, um, meet during lunch, some meet after school, and that varies. We do offer our late bus on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays for those students that do stay after school for our clubs, and we will be hosting a club fair within the first two weeks of school this, this year, okay? One of the great ways to get involved is through our wonderful THS student government. So our student government organization is run by Ms. Iverson, who does an absolutely fantastic job. Um, it's really essential to student life here at THS. So this past year, our um, GO partnered with REITs Across America. They partnered with ECAP for various collections throughout the year. They scheduled a variety of spirit weeks and other events. And they also partnered with a veteran organization and sold Veterans Day gear, which we are going to be continuing that partnership this year. Our spring musical, as always, is, is another point of pride. It's a huge success. Um, this past year was Annie, which received numerous Metro awards in a variety of award categories. Um, this year we're actually offering at the middle school level a fall musical, which is part of our budget for this coming school year. So our middle school students are going to have an opportunity to get their own exposure to um, theater and seeing the behind the scenes workings so that we can even, you know, make our program at the high school better and better. Habitat for Humanity um, is definitely one of our most popular clubs. We have over 50 students signed up yearly to participate. And you know, basically what our students do is they go out and they participate in a variety of building projects and local cleanups. We've been working with both Habitat for Humanity um, and the Fuller Center over the past two years. So this is one of those clubs that it's a great way to give back to the local community and it's a great way to earn some service hours as well. Science Olympiads, though some of you may be very familiar with it at the middle school, we do continue that club and that partnership in the high school. So our high school Science Olympiad team does participate in the Lower Hudson Valley Division Tournament each year. Our team last year received six individual medals, as you can see from the board on the, on the screen. Um, we part, we uh, received awards and honors in anatomy and physiology, cell biology, and chemistry lab. So our middle school program is so wonderful, and now our high school program, we're receiving those students that have such exposure in the middle school, and it, it's really turning into a great, great program. We also love to uh, celebrate with our students. So in the spring of each year, we do little things, like we celebrate our college t-shirt day, and that's in collaboration between our GO and our guidance office. We also offer some clubs that are a bit unique, okay? So, for example, where we, we have our snow sports club, this club we brought back last school year, and this year our, stu our students went to, on two trips to Catamount Mountain. Um, we had roughly 40 high school students participate in these trips, and we always try to coordinate on days where students are always, you know, available to go. We try not to have conflicts, um, but it's a great day filled with skiing and snowboarding, and it's something unique that Tucko offers. In addition, we do have an after-school um, program, fitness program, that is aligned with our social-emotional learning goals and our um, health and wellness initiatives. So our fitness center um, initiative continues to be a huge success. So our fitness center is open daily, so five days a week, from 2.45 to 4.15 in the afternoon, and it's facilitated by our two fitness coaches, Mr. Pappas and Ms. Kalasako, and it's really something that is open to the entire student body, so it's not just an athletic thing, it's open to everybody, so we encourage you to take advantage, and that is open from 2.45 to 4.15 daily. In addition, we celebrated CODA Day this year, where our THSGO participated in what's known as the CODA Day Youth Summit, okay, which discusses co-occurring disorders, so this is in partnership with the Harris Project, and basically, um, this organization holds it. It's in collaboration with every high school in Westchester County. This year, we are expanding on our partnership. We were selected as a pilot school to partner with the Harris Project, so they'll be doing a parent presentation um, on one evening. They'll be speaking to our faculty and staff, and they will be pushing into some of our classrooms to discuss the importance of this topic. 
Lastly, I'll talk a little bit about athletics. So as you can see up on the board, we offer three full seasons of sports. Okay, we are recognized by the New York State Public High School Athletic Association, and we are governed by Section 1 Athletics. Um, one really ex exceptional point of pride is this past school year, as Mr. Arthur mentioned, we were named a school of distinction for the second year in a row, and this is actually the only the second time in school history that we received this award. Um, there were only eight other schools in Section 1 and only 114 schools across the state that were honored, and that is in connection to our team's commitment to both athletics and academics, where each of our varsity teams received scholar-athlete status throughout their season. Okay, which is a great accomplishment. So with our athletics, we offer 45 teams across 24 sports. Um, if you look at any small or mid-sized school across Westchester County, we offer more than what they're offering in the realm of athletics. So um, I would encourage you to really take advantage of what we're doing. We've expanded our mergers with other local districts. So um, we ask you to please take a look at even some of our newer programs. Up on the board, you'll also see some of our recent accomplishments. Um, you know, we've had 13 Section 1 titles over the past two years. We've had three regional wins over the last two years, and we actually had a state championship team um, this past winter. So it's a really a huge accomplishment, okay? You can see some of those programs up on the board here. Lastly is homecoming, so please mark your calendars. Homecoming this year is going to be held on, from Thursday, September 26th through Saturday, September 28th, so it's a bit earlier this year, okay? So it's that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, September 26th to September 28th, and we're looking forward to the whole school community coming out, right? It's not just about athletics on this weekend. We do have athletic contests, but we do have our parade, our bonfire, and all of those exceptional events, we'll have our school pep rally. So we really encourage everyone to come on out um, and take advantage of really bringing the community together, okay? At this time, I'll call up Mr. DeBellis. Thank you, everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully you had a great summer. Um, you know, Mr. Arthur said it, and I'll just kind of reiterate it. You know, it seems like just the other day that we went through eighth grade graduation and, and now you're starting your high school career. Um, and, you know, four years are going to go by very, very quickly. So you don't always get a second chance to go back and kind of redo. So start thinking about some goals, academic goals, social goals, all right, and start to push yourself, challenge yourself. You know, now is the time when you have that opportunity. You know, hopefully you, you have that drive inside of you because again, when you get to junior year, you've already created half of your transcript that colleges are looking at. Um, you know, Mr. C mentioned it. You know, one of the, I think, really important parts that students don't realize is, you know, colleges, uh, that's what they do for a living. You know, you put something on your resume or your transcript for one year, they know you're probably trying to just kind of, you know, add to it. Do something that you're passionate about, stay consistent with it, develop those leadership skills because I think they're really important and going to help you as you move through. A lot of the things that, you know, I'm going to mention or touch upon, you know, I think are pretty consistent with what we've done in the middle school as well, but just a, a couple of things that I do want to, you know, mention or, or go over quickly. Attendance. Um, attendance is something that is not only you know, link through research over and over again to academic success, higher scores on standardized exams like your SATs, APs, ACTs, but it's also an initiative that our district has been looking at. New York State will classify a student as what's called chronically absent once you hit 18 days, okay? And if you kind of do the math, if you are absent two days a month, okay, for the school year, you are gonna be labeled as chronically absent, okay? It's more difficult to stay up with your, your classwork. Obviously, you're missing things, so you have to be in school as much as possible, okay? And I try to say to students all the time, think of it as savings account, okay? Save those days for when you really, really need them, okay? Don't use them just because, you know, the weather's kind of bad or kind of good, all right? Try to get here every day because it is important, okay? 
Um, if you are absent for some reason, obviously we ask parents to please send in the documentation so that we can label it accordingly. If you're at a doctor's visit, we need a doctor's note. Okay, and you know, if you were to hospitalize or something like that, then we need documentation. Otherwise, power school is going to show it as an illegal absence. All right, we will communicate, we will have outreach, whether it be letters, whether it be phone calls, or if it gets to the point where we have to invite you in and say we need to have a meeting, we will take those different steps because, again, it is something that we are focusing on throughout the district. Your attendance also affects athletics as well as extracurricular activities. So if you are absent, you cannot participate in that day. Okay, so again, you know, we understand if there are emergencies, that's why we ask for the documentation. Mr. Arthur does have the ability in extenuating circumstances to grant you an exception. Okay, but the policy is that if you are absent, you are excluded. Okay, and I'll, I'll touch on it real quick, but that's also academic, the eligibility. Okay, after each progress report, after each marking period, we, conduct, we you know, compile what's called an ineligibility list. Okay, so if you are not passing or you're meeting the criteria, then you could be excluded. Okay, and not only is it obviously personally affecting you, but it's also affecting your team or the club or the performance, and unfortunately, we've had that. So again, think about that ahead of time, you know, and try to make sure you're there and obviously do as well as you can in school. Okay, lunch. We know that you know you you have a little bit more freedom now, okay, and that's one of the transitions of going from eighth grade into high school, okay. And we just had our sixth grade orientation. You know, there's a little bit of a different focus with those students coming from fifth to sixth, but you know, at this point, you are all young adults, okay. So you get a little bit more responsibility, all right. But again, you have to also be very careful with that and use it appropriately. I think that's important as you start to move, you know, and that'll be the next transition when you go from high school to college. You know, you're going to be on your own. You don't have mom and dad or, or your family there with you to wake you up all the time. All right. So we're starting to kind of start that transition for you. Behavior, we will meet with everyone um, probably the first day, if not the second day, to go over our code of conduct, talk about DASA, talk about the different expectations. But I think it really comes down to obviously treating each other respectfully, having compassion for others, don't you know, exclude anyone, always try to include people, because those are all skills and those are all qualities and characteristics that you want to maintain for the rest of your life. And if you're an athlete or you're a musician or you're a performer and you're being recruited, you're being judged on that as well. Okay, so that's important. So, you know, maintain that, not just from the, the standpoint of getting in trouble, because those are qualities that really are gonna help you shine, okay, as you start to move through college and your career. Um, talked a little bit about extracurricular participation. There are so many opportunities, especially for a school and a district of our size. I mean, it's amazing the way that the district administration, the Board of Education, the PTA, everyone supports all of these initiatives because they want you to have these opportunities, okay? And a lot of them, because we are small, have to get sometimes shifted around based on participation. So if you're interested in something, make sure you're participating in it. Okay, because if not, it seems as though some students are not interested and then you might have to make some choices. All right. Lockers, just a couple of reminders. Lockers should not be shared with anyone. Okay, it's important that you keep them neat, okay, or at least clean, food, things like that. You should not be leaving them because obviously, you know, you can get rodents or you can get other visitors that we don't want to see. So please keep that clean. Um, your lock combo should not be shared, okay? Ideal, I think Mr. C can attest as well. There are several incidents we deal with every year that unfortunately something comes out of a locker, it gets taken out, you know, and I ask, you know, does anyone have your combination? Yeah, just two of my best friends. You know, you don't know if that locker gets shared or, or if other people pass along that combination, so just protect it, okay? Same thing goes in terms of valuables or, you know, large sums of money. You don't need to bring any of those and you shouldn't have them with you, all right? So please just be careful. 
visitors, parents, um, you know, guardians, anyone that's coming to the school potentially pick somebody up or you're coming in for a meeting, you must use the main entrance. Um, we have a number of security procedures and protocols that are put in place. Um, we collaborate very closely with East Chester Police Department, um, Al Taris, who is our security consultant, and we have what's called a single point of entry, okay? So you cannot use any other uh, exit or any other door other than the main entrance. If there's an emergency or we're evacuating, different scenario, we'll talk about that, okay, as we start to go through our emergency preparedness. That is something that we also are focusing on, you know, very, very closely because unfortunately things have changed throughout the country. There's been a number of incidents. So academics, extracurriculars are great. We need to make sure that everybody is safe when they're in this building first and foremost. Okay, so we ask for your cooperation with that. If you see someone, staff member, you know, a friend, do not open a door for anyone for any reason. Really important, okay? If you are being signed out, we ask that you go to the front desk. Obviously, you let your teacher know if it's during a period you need to leave for something. Um, but the parents, guardians, you must come into the building to sign them out. Okay, we cannot just send the child out and meet you at the, at the curb. You have to physically sign them out. Okay, once you get to the building, okay, once you let us know you're here to pick them up, we will then call up to the classroom or have them, you know, brought down or have them sent down and then they'll be able to leave with you. Okay, so please, we ask for your cooperation. Um, like I said, code of conduct will go through. We had posted that, I believe it was sent out via Blackboard Connect. It's on our website as well. Um, take a look, read through it. Obviously, it's important that you know those different, um, you know, expectations and obviously what, you know, we're asking for students. Cell phone, electronic devices. Um, Mr. Arthur touched on it with the Chromebooks. Okay, I'll mention it also with the cell phone. 85% of the incidents that we deal with are cell phone related or social media related, okay? That is another piece that I'm learning, okay? My son is going into the ninth grade as well. So one of the things that, you know, we're looking at, you know, between working with recruiters and talking with different people, your digital footprint will be examined very closely, especially if you're an athlete. They have departments part of their recruiting process, that is all that they do, is they will scrub your social media. And they're gonna look to see, what are you posting? What are you connected to? Okay, so all of that is important. I know sometimes we don't realize how, how far it reaches. Your social media reaches everywhere in this world. Okay, so just think about that before you post, okay, before you comment, before you do anything that unfortunately you look back and say, oh my God, I can't take it back. Okay, and that's why I say you gotta think before you hit that button, all right? It's important. Cell phones though, when you, know, you come out of class, obviously you're going to the restroom, you're going to the guidance office, you, know, you, you wanna grab that phone right away and check that social media. Unplug from it, okay? It is so liberating, I know you are not used to it. Put it down, okay? Because that will change your mood. Okay, that will change all of a sudden something that you weren't thinking and somebody just posted something, you know, it just, it changes your whole mindset. Okay, so go throughout the day, you don't need that phone. I mean, we have phones inside of the building, obviously, if there's an emergency, you ever need to get in touch with a parent. We ask parents not to, you know, start calling children during the day because obviously it interrupts the class if they forgot to turn their ringer off. You can always call the main office, you can always call the guidance, and obviously if there's a message or something that we need to, to get to your child, we'll do that, all right? Student arrival, I think it's you know the same as it's been. If you are dropping off before 742, we ask you to drop off on Middle Road. Same thing with pickup, okay? And if you're arriving by the bus, then obviously you'll be brought to Siwanoi to the front entrance. Um, once 742 hits, we will close that back door, okay? We will have personnel and staff at that back door while students are coming in before the, the day starts. But once that day starts, that door will get closed. We arm that door. There's an alarm on all the perimeter doors. So obviously, if you're going out, it's gonna trigger that alarm. So, I'll, you know, you have to bring the, the student over to Siwanoi and bring them to the front. And if you are late, then you'll have to get a pass, okay? And obviously, that's monitored as well. And, you know, we'll have a conversation if we need to. Student attendance, again, talking about it's important to show up, okay? Uh, you know, 
it's difficult, obviously, as an adult, vacation or, or you know time off is one thing, but if you're missing 20 days of your job without an excuse, it's gonna be difficult to maintain that job, I'll tell you that right now. So again, we're trying to prepare you for the expectation. You make a commitment, school obviously is something you have to do, but you should wanna be here as well, okay? And you should wanna do as well as you possibly can. So get to school as much as possible, okay? Like I said, that should be your priority, especially if you have you know, other um, activities or sports or things that you wanna do, they are connected, okay? If you are out, you know, you're sick, illness happens, family emergencies happen, you know, unfortunately there are different situations. We ask that you please communicate with us. That's the email address. Um, you know, if you need to call, that's fine as well. But again, send in that supporting documentation, okay? It's very, very important for us so that we can also code power school correctly. Um, if you are being signed out, same thing. Please make sure you go to the front entrance. Please make sure you let them know that you're picking your child up. We'll call them down um, and then you'll sign them out and we'll get them down as quickly as possible. This is just a little chart in terms of teacher, counselor, assistant principal or principal um, in terms of resources. You know, I, I get a lot of phone calls from parents asking about different scenarios or situations. You know, and one of the things I try to tell them is reach out to the teacher. Parents don't understand sometimes Attendance is a legal document, which means that that can be subpoenaed by a court, okay? That is a legal document that I cannot change without a teacher's consent because I'm not in the classroom. I don't know if that child was there. There are sometimes mistakes that the student went to the odd class when it was an even day, you know, things like that happen. Um, but you have to start with the teacher for probably the majority of incidents. Same thing, behavioral incident, something very serious, you'll probably hear from me right away, but chances are you're gonna hear from your teacher for, first, okay? Because they're the one that can give you at least the idea of what happened, you can ask some questions, and then obviously if we need to elevate that, we will, um, we'll have that conversation. But a, a lot of answers can come from the teachers before they come from other people, because they're the ones that are in direct contact with your children on a daily basis. Uh, building support services. So starting October 1st, teachers are required to do one hour of extra help per week. Some teachers will do one hour one day. Some teachers will split it up and do a half an hour twice a week. I can tell you that probably 95% of the teachers are doing way beyond one hour a week. Okay, the one thing that I will tell you, and I think you speak to anyone that's graduated from Tuckahoe High School, our teachers will go above and beyond to help you with whatever you need. But obviously it's on you to go and ask for that help or to try and you know, ask for assistance. As you get older, you've gotta to learn to advocate for yourself. There is nothing wrong, you don't have to do it in front of the class, you can do it at the end of the class, before the class, but develop a relationship with your teacher because in a few years, you're gonna to have to ask some of these teachers for recommendations to college. Okay, and you want to have several adults in the building that know you very well, that can talk about what type of a student are you, okay, what type of a person are you, okay, whether you're being recruited or you're going for academics or performing arts, whatever it might be, you're going to need those allies and building a rapport with them is really important. All right, so again, whether it's school, whether it's work, whether it's college, these are all life skills that we really wanna to try to reinforce and teach you as you move throughout. Uh, we will have an extra help schedule probably for the back to school night, okay? So in a couple weeks when we have that, I believe it's on September 12th, um, that'll be back to school for the high school. We'll have that available, we'll post it on the website, okay? And then um, obviously if you have any questions, you'll let us know. A lot of times with the teachers, you can set up to maybe meet them during lunch as well, before school, even if it's not a day that they're having extra help, they'll stay back and they'll meet with you, okay? All right, I wish everyone a very successful year. Have a great couple days left and we'll see you. No, we're not done yet, not yet, not yet. I gotta bring up Mr. C, all right? Thanks everyone, great to see you.
All right, the last few things we're going to talk about, um, the first is our health office. So we have a new school nurse um, who started with us last year, Nurse Jane. Um, she's been doing a wonderful job getting acclimated to Tuckahoe and partnering and working with our families. Um, anything that you need. So she took some time to really update our nurse slash health office information or portion of the district website. So please be sure to check that out for any sort of health or nursing need okay, that your child may have. Additionally, um, I've highlighted up there the partnership between the, school, the parent and the school nurse is essential, okay, especially depending on your child's needs. So please be sure to communicate any important information about your child's medical conditions or medication directly with the school nurse, okay. Additionally, when an injury happens, whether that injury may be in school or outside of school, please make sure that when you, your child comes back to school the next day, they stop in to see the school nurse. So what we do is we create an action plan, all right, that gets communicated with your child's teachers, with our security staff in the building, so that we know if there's a mobility issue or we know if there's um, any sort of accommodations needed where a child may need to leave class a few minutes early so they're not in a crowded hallway. Um, that's something that Nurse Jane has really taken very seriously and, and it's been an initiative for her. So so we ask that you please um, speak with your child about adhering to that so we can really care for your child the best way possible. Our student parent portal, all right, it's a tool. Many of you are familiar with it. Everybody should have a login. If you do not have a login, I ask that you contact Ms. Nicoletos in the guidance office who can help connect you um, with getting that done if it needs to be elevated to Dr. Keogh, who um, is our Director of Curriculum Technology and Instruction. Um, he can also assist with that, but I would start with Mrs. Nicoletto, who can help get you back onto parent or student portal, okay? At this point, I'll call back up Mr. Arthur to wrap it up. So it's been almost an hour, so we know it's getting a bit long, so we're gonna wrap this up. But before doing so, just really want to underscore two points that were made um, either by Mr. DeBellis or by Mr. C. Please note this entire presentation is in your package in color, so you have it. We'll also post it on our website. Um, you know, my son, who's in a junior, um, ninth grade, again, great young man, great student, but he made a couple of careless mistakes. And one of the things I talked to my son about is that Whatever you do, teachers remember. Those are the same teachers that you have to go to for college recommendations. So think about how hard you work, going to extra help. You don't go, girls, don't go to extra help when you're struggling. You go to extra help when it's available. Because that teacher, even though you have an A in her class or his class, will talk about your commitment. I want to stress that. Do not wait until you struggle to go to extra help. Go when you're also doing well. Because the idea here is you want to get as good a grade as possible. There are over 18,000 high schools nationally. There are a number of students that have 4.0s. What distinguishes you from that other individual? So not everyone is going to achieve a 4.0. But your work ethic, your commitment to excellence will matter. So college recommendation letters do matter and they're part of that college application process. That being said, Mr. DeBella said it, you're no longer in eighth grade, you're in ninth grade. The consequences are more significant. The decisions that you make. Social media, as he said, accounts for over 70 5% of the disciplinary issues we deal with. And let me be clear, sometimes it's not only what happens in school. Something can start in school, be small, and, hap and extend out of school and expand. If something starts in school and it extends to home, we get involved. If something starts in the community, never comes into school, we do not get involved. That becomes a police matter. But if it trickles into school, we get involved. So we're telling you these things because we deal with a lot. We deal with a lot of different things. So think about the decisions that you make. Be mindful. Do not walk through the hallways with buds in both ears, headphones. They'll be confiscated. 
You have to be able to hear announcements. So think about the decisions that you make. Do not go into the bathroom and using your cell phone. All right? It extends your time out of class. Every second you're out of class matters. So just want to reinforce those things. We know you're going to have a great year, but think about that quote. Do something for yourself today that your future self will thank you for. So again, important dates. It's in your packet. This will be posted. Um, back to school night, the 12th. So that's going to be here before you know it. Quickly, and I apologize for those parents who've heard it before, there are 10 weeks in every quarter. Between each quarter, there are progress reports. Your progress report is an alert to let you know where you stand in the course. But the report card becomes final. So what am I saying? If you are doing well or relatively well by progress report, you still have a point to get to that A. All right? So, Dr. Keogh, as I said, was not going to be here. I did cover one component of his presentation, and there's one other piece that I will speak to. We are one-to-one -one districts, so each of you receive a Chromebook. Please know, be responsible with that device. If you break the device, you may have to pay for it. So please take care of the electronic device that you're given, and as I end, just want to stress, we have been on the phone at 9 o'clock at night calling a family because of something that a child started to Google. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, we're dealing with issues from what a child has either posted or screened. Be careful being part of group chats. Anyone who's involved in that group chat, you get investigated. So we're telling you this because we deal with a lot. And colleges, as Mr. DeBella said, they're savvy. They're looking at your social media account. They're looking at your digital footprint because they want to know who are you, not just what kind of student you are, what kind of person are you. So please keep these things in mind, right? We want to wish you an amazing year. If there's anyone have any questions, please we'll take them. Um, we're going to pass these out, if you don't mind. These are the course catalog. Again, you will meet with your school counselor, but we want to make sure that you leave here and you can start taking a look at the various courses that we offer. So this is yours. Please don't leave them on the floor. All right? There's a lot of effort that went into putting this together. Any burning question that a parent or student wants to ask, we'll address it. All right, let's give it up for Mr. C and Mr. DeBellis. Thank you all, and we'll see you on the third. As you leave, students, to be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. So get to school on time. Get to your classes on time. All these things matter. All right, so I want to stress that. Thank you so much, and we'll see you on September 3rd.